1, Colossians chapter 1. And we are going to be teaching this morning from the subject, Jesus Christ, our resurrection hope. Jesus Christ, our resurrection hope. And when we talk about resurrection hope, we're talking about not only the fact that Jesus Christ was victorious over death, hell, and the grave, but the fact that whatever we are facing under the law of sin and death, we can rise above it. We can rise above depression, sickness, and disease. Death represented sin and all that it comprises. He defeated it all, sin, sickness, disease. He was raised from the dead. And we can, praise God, rise above anything that's trying to hold you down under the law of sin and death. According to Romans chapter 8, Verse 2, which says, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death. Thank God. We can rise above sin, sickness, disease. That's what the, the, the victory over the grave was all about. Jesus got up over it all. And the amazing thing about Jesus' resurrection, and while I'm calling this our resurrection hope, is that's what makes him distinguish from all other men and Christianity from all other religions. And by the way, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship between God and man. No man, no leader, no founder of any organization, religious or whatever, ever died, laid in the grave, and was resurrected, praise God, to life. All those that are died are still in the grave. He's the only one. Hallelujah. That makes him stand out. And the fact that most religions require that the people die for the leader. You know, they go to war for a leader. They strap a bomb on themselves for a leader. I'm jihadist. I'm the, Jesus is the only one who do, didn't require that the people die for him, but he died for the people. Hallelujah. That's what, that's what makes him Lord. And death could not hold him down. No other religion, no other Eastern religion, no other, I don't care what name, you can put Buddha, you can talk about Muhammad, you can talk about all that, they are still in the grave. Jesus is alive and well, praise God. And he's our resurrection hope because he lived, that means I can rise above circumstance. I can rise above this pandemic. I can rise above adversity because anything that, that's come under the law of sin and death, he overcame it, and our victory is in him. And so thank God for the resurrected Lord. He's our hope, and when we talk about hope, it means earnest expectation for good. That's what hope is. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. We have Jesus. He is our hope. Hallelujah. And even in the midst of pandemic, even in the midst of all the uh, situations that we've seen with the economy and everything that has happened in, in, our, in our government and everything that has happened uh, amongst us physically and everything that has happened all around us with all the gun violence and all the gang violence and all the, uh, the division, we see there's still hope. I, I was saying on last week, I'm the most optimistic person there is. It's not what's happening bad. It's just that it's, this is not going to be my good final outcome. Some people are pessimistic. They, they will some, whatever bad will happen is going to happen. The worst and everything. But I just believe in looking beyond what the world is doing. Looking beyond what, and saying, you know, Jesus is still alive and well. And he said, I got good plans towards your life. Plans of good and not of evil to give you a good final outcome. It ain't over yet, man. It ain't going to end, praise God, like it is now. We're going to end on a positive, powerful note. The Lord himself is coming for a, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. It's going to come out like the word. But you got to have hope. Hope that looks beyond the present circumstance. And Jesus is our hope. That's what I want to talk to you about. He's the He's our resurrection hope. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 through 29. Wherefore I am made a minister, Paul said, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill 
the word of God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. He said this was a mystery from other ages and generations, but now it has come to light or is made manifest to you and I. Didn't he tell you what the mystery of to whom God will make known? What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? That was you and I. We were without God, which is now Christ where? In you, come on, the hope of glory. Say that. Christ in me. My hope of glory. Okay, let's say it all together. Ready? Christ in me. My hope of glory. Say it again. Christ in me, my hope of glory. What does the word Christ mean? Jesus' last name? No, the anointed one in his anointing. What does the anointing do? Removes burdens and destroys yokes. Say, the anointing of God is in me, and it is my hope of glory. It's my expectation for good. Something good is going to happen in my life because of Christ, the anointed one that's in me. I expect it. I look for it. Matter of fact, this morning, it followed me into this service. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me, not once, but all the days of my life. Hallelujah. It, it's, it, it, it's here. But why? Because so you know Christ in me, our hope. He's our resurrection hope. See, the anointing of God is the resurrection power of God. That's what raised Jesus from the dead. It was the anointing. Death was a burden. Sin and the curse of law was a burden. And after three days and three nights, after Jesus had paid the price for Adam's high treason and Adam's failure, thank God the anointing removed that burden. Death got off of him. He was made alive and he was resurrected and raised from the dead. And he came up victorious out of that tomb and said, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. He says, I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Satan don't have the power anymore. He had it. But behold, I took the keys from him, and behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. In other words, I give you authority in my name to cast out devils. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. And so it was the anointing of God. And that anointing is in us. If Christ is in you, if you're born again, that's why I'm calling this Christ, our resurrection hope. I can rise above anything. There's no such thing as a hopeless situation for a Christian. I don't care what you've been diagnosed. It could be fourth stage cancer. I don't care what it, lupus, any type of disease. Jesus bore that on the cross. The healer divine is right here. I said he's right here. He's not somewhere up 300 million miles in the sky. That's his physical or spirit form where he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. But he lives in you and I. And he gives us hope even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of economic uh, downturn and people the changes they've gone through even in the midst of some physical diagnosis of sickness and disease there's always hope for a born again Christian there's resurrection hope the resurrection power of God we can rise above anything and everything ha have you said this so long you forgot what it said I can do holy wait a minute wait a minute wait you missed it you missed something so you got to first have some confidence in you. Christ is in you. But if you don't believe you can do. Oh, if you just hit some of you. See, it's you and God working together as laborers. I just want you to have an attitude and I'll provide the strength. I can do. I can overcome this pandemic. I can come out of debt. I can see my children say, not in my own strength, I can do it through Christ who infuses me with inner strength. That's an attitude. It's a winning attitude. It's resurrection. Of, there's hope for us. We're not like the world. We have Christ. 
And so that's why he said, put this up again. That, that, that verse, I think it was 27. Uh, I got to, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ, the anointed one. Resurrection power. The same power that raised Jesus from dead is in you. And I can do all things. In that, Christ in me is my hope of glory. Now watch this. Keep going. Whom we preach. That's what I'm preaching this morning. That was Paul's message. Wanted every man and teach it every man in our wisdom that we may present every man perfect or complete in Christ. Watch this. Whereas I am laboring, striving according to his working, which worketh where? In me mightily. Paul said, this same power that is in you is in me. And is working in me mightily. He was talking about resurrection power. Matter of fact, put up verse 29 and amplify. Look what he calls it. For this I labor, even unto weariness, striving with all superhuman energy. Good God Almighty. That's resurrection power. It ain't your human strength. It's not you and your own self. It's super. It's above. It's, it's the, God is the super. You're the natural. And when his superhuman strength comes on you, you're not just limited to natural ability. Paul said, I got superhuman energy. He's talking about resurrection power. Which he so mightily enkindles and working where? In me. Well, who was in him? Christ in you. That's supernatural resurrection power. How you can rise above anything. Not in your own strength. Not in your own energy. Matter of fact, Paul said, when I'm weak, then the power of God is strong. His strength is made perfect in my weakness. When I've done all I know how to do, and I've exasperated all my talents, my thoughts, and my energy, that's right where God picks it up and says, all right, that's your natural strength. Now, this supernatural energy is about to take over. We're coming out of this situation. We're coming out of that. You can deal with that child situation, that job situation, that marital situation, whatever it is. But not in your own strength. I can do. I'll be honest with you. Since the devil attacked me last week, some of you heard it in my voice. Yeah, I, I've been fighting the good fight of faith all week long. And I let the devil know I'm going to preach and teach anyhow. I don't care that the old man here with a wheelchair. I got supernatural human strength. And you can't stop me unless I decide to stop. And that anointing of God has kicked in. It's the resurrection power of God. That's why we celebrate this day. Because Jesus overcame death, hell, the grave, every negative thing. And he's our resurrection hope. Hope means earnest expectation for good. Christ in me, my hope of glory. My hope of manifested goodness. Why? Because he's in me. He's right here. He's right here. That anointing. Resurrection power. And Paul said, this is what we preach. And then he goes back. If you back up, go in your Bible and back up to about verse what? 20. What's that? 20 what? 3? Look at 23. So he was talking about Christ in us, our hope. Our hope is in Christ. Not just the stock market. Not just some, some man or some woman. My hope is in Christ. My expectation comes from him. Not in the doctor. Thank God for doctors, attorneys, realtors. But when you believe in God, you got to, your hope, faith is the substance of things hoped for. That hope has got to be established in the promises of God, something God has said. That's what gives you hope. And he said, if you continue in the faith, in the word, ground it, and settle and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What, what, hope, what gospel is preaching? Christ in you, your hope of glory. He said, don't let no one move you. Pandemic may come. Sickness may come. Negativity. They may say your job is going, going to be shut down. Don't be moved away from the hope 
the expectation, the good news of Christ in you, your hope of glory, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature. He just said I was preaching it. Which is under heaven where Paul had made a minister. Now, can we see this in Amplified? Do we have it or do we? Yes. And this he will do, provide that you continue to stay with and in the faith in Christ. He was talking about in Christ. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Well grounded, settled, steadfast, not shifting or moving away from the hope. Not shifting. You know, people try to tell you, man, it's this pandemic, man. I mean, oof, it's terrible time, man. Look at the economy. Look at, look, look at this situation. Look, when, when the kids going back to school, I mean, we ain't going to never get normal again. I mean, oh, my God. People and I, I, I had loved ones who died by this and loved ones. And I, I, it, listen, I'm not, I'm not saying that these things are not happening. I'm saying you can't let them move you. Because if you get away, away, if you move away from a hope, all left, all that is left is depression. Because hope deferred, when you when you just say no hope, I mean, you know, the doctor said this, the realtor said that, my kids are never gonna go back to school, they don't have any money. You know, they saw they said they had cancer, and blah, blah blah. When you hey, there's no expectation. Weariness, depression set in. That's why you should let nobody, because there are people on your job, in your family, that's trying to move you away from the hope, because misery loves company. <laughs> Folks sometimes get mad at you because you happy. What you so happy for? What you smiling for? Well, I mean, am I doing something? You know, you don't take all that. What's wrong with you? That's someone with no hope. And Paul is telling us Christ is in you, your hope of glory. He's our resurrection hope. And don't you be moved away from the hope. Don't let no man, no relative, you're not your mama, not your dad. I know you love them, respect them. But Jesus said, if you love mama, brother, sister, you can't be my disciple. See, sometimes we're so soul tied to other people that we forget about God. Don't never let nobody, no person, replace God in your life. He's the one that got you out of the gutter most. <laughs> and I, I'm not going to be moved. Paul said, none of these things move me. Don't be moved away from this. Oh, notice what he said. Real grounded, steadfast, not shifting and moving away from the hope. What? Now we just found out what the hope is. Christ in you. Which rests on and is inspired by the glad tidings of the gospel which you've heard from Pastor Dick, <laughs> which he has been preaching this morning and all over the internet this morning. All oh, praise God, those streets as being designed for and offered without restriction to every person under heaven whereby Paul and Pastor Diz are made and become a minister. So now we know what he's talking about. So let me, let me just put my first statement up to get this thing started based off of this. If Christ is in us, our hope of glory, then our faith confession in Jesus' resurrection is then the cornerstone and the hope of our salvation. It's the cornerstone and the hope. Our faith confession, think about it, of that resurrection power, Christ in me, my hope of glory. The resurrected power of God is in me. The anointing of God is in me. My hope, expectation for good, that's the cornerstone. I mean, that's the cornerstone. Why, as a Christian, why are we optimistic? Why do we feel that we can overcome any and everything? It's because Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave. It was his victory over death. I mean, that's the ultimate. We ain't talking about having an accident and getting your car restored. We ain't talking about a hurricane blowing down your house and getting it rebuilt. We're not talking about trials and tests, things that are repairable. We're talking about when it's over, death. I mean, three days and three nights, cold in the pit of hell. And, and even his own disciples thought it was a failure. 
Many of them, Peter went back to fish. A lot of them went back to their trade. But after three days and three nights, there was a rumbling and a shaking. God was satisfied that Jesus had paid the price for Adam's high treason. And he said, enough is enough. Loose him and let him go. And the Bible says the Spirit of God came from heaven, kicked open the gates of hell, went in and that emancipated. I'm talking about, it. Not only, he didn't resemble a man when he was on the cross. Three days and three nights in the pit of hell, he came alive in the Spirit. Satan began to back up and all demons. The Bible says every principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that was named was against him. And it still couldn't hold him down. He came alive. And Satan and principality began to back up and he spoiled principalities, demons, demonic spirit, and powers. Made it open, sure them. Walked up to Satan, stripped him of the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Took the crown that was on his head that he had stolen from Adam because he had crowned man with glory and honor. And he took that crown and put on his head and took the keys of death, hell, and the grave and said, now I'm king of kings and I'm lord of lords. And begin to do what Genesis said, begin to take his heel and bruise his head Put him under his feet. Come up out of that tomb and said, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Hallelujah. Praise God. I am he that was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. Man, that gives me hope, praise God. And all his disciples that thought he was a failure, there's Mary there at the tomb and said, it thinking he's a gardener with that glorified body. If you lay him, can you tell me where he is? He said, Mary. And her eyes were open. She said, Rabona, master, she said, don't touch me. I'm not yet ascended to my father, which is in heaven. But you go to the disciples and say, I'll send to your God and my God and your father. And, and she went and the woman, you reckon Jesus didn't know she was a woman? Because some people say women ain't called to preach. Mary preached the first message. She ran and began to preach. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. That gives me hope. If he can overcome all that, surely I can overcome a sore toe, a cough. Come on, a bill. Are you listening to me? The resurrection is what gives us hope. Hallelujah. Especially this morning, because a lot of us have been shut up. Lies have kind of become unnatural. But thank God Jesus said, I'm going to normalize things again. You're going to get your flow back. You're going to get your healing back. Matter of fact, everything that you've lost during this pandemic, everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, I'm going to restore to you. Not just praise God. This thing been over a year. The years that the canker worm. And so what's the cornerstone? What, 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 why are we optimistic? Why are we coming to church? Why are your home streaming just saying, you know, in spite of everything, it's still going to be all right. It's because of the resurrection. In spite of the bill. In spite of what I got in the mail. Somehow, some way, God is bringing me out of this thing. In spite of my children, not in school. I, I, you know, somehow, it's the resurrection. I'm going to share one scripture with you, and when not, it's going to mean something different. We use it a lot, particularly when we lead people to the Lord. If you're not saved, you can be saved off of Romans 10, 9 right now. But listen what it's saying. Put it up. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth, it ain't what I say, it's what you say. They told the woman with this, your blood, you're going to die. Told her that for 12 years. Took all the money. And she got worse. But it wasn't what they said. But she said within herself. I hear what y'all saying. But if I. I'm saying something. 
which will usurp authority over what? You, it's not what other people said about you. What are you said about yourself? Can, come on, touch the hem of his garments. And she got what she said. If thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. What's this? And believe in thine heart. This is what I want you to see. That God has raised him from the dead. That God has raised him from the dead. That God has raised, has, he's alive, he's well. Where is he? Christ in me. The resurrected Lord is right here in me. Christ in me, my hope of glory. He gives me hope. Hope in a pandemic. Hope in the midst of lack. Hope in the midst of trouble. Hope when there's trouble. Why? Because he's alive. That wasn't just to get you saved. That's, a, that's, a, that's an attitude. That's a banner to hold up. He's alive. Thou shalt be saved. That word saved just don't mean born again. It means delivered. It means healed. It means set free. It means perseverance for all temporary evils. The Greek word soteria. See, this resurrection is a cornerstone. The fact that God raised them from the dead. He's alive. That's the cool. That gives me hope. That's the cornerstone of why I preach. Because what? I'm preaching about a living God. All the other people who call themselves religion and leave, they're dead. They're still in the tomb somewhere. Huh? This one is alive. <laughs> That's why he said, who's like come to me? Come on. Who will you compare to me? Huh? There is no other God. The difference between me and all other gods, I declare the end from the beginning. I already know how it's going to turn out. You're going to come out healed. Your needs are going to be there. I ain't got to wait and, and, and see what the end going to be. I am the beginning and the end. I am the alpha and the omega. Who will you like come to me? I can call you healed before the doctor even operates. I can call you debt free before you ever come out of debt. Before you had the problem, I already had that solution, praise God. Come on, that's what gives us hope. That's why we can shout. Paul said we glory in tribulation. Not drop our head and wine be a tree. We glory in tribulation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work and you're going to come out perfect and entire. Won't ain't nothing. So I can glory in tribulation. Why? We have hope. Our God says, I've already declared your end from the very beginning. Buddha can't do that. Muhammad can't do that. God bless all of them. All those good people you want to have faith in. I'm not knocking all the religion. I'm just saying they can't do that. And that's what makes Christianity. And we as Christians trusted in Christ and as our hope of glory. Distinctive from everything else. God raised them from the dead. Tell me one other man, any other head of any religion that that happened to. That he came back alive, particularly after paying the price for the people he loved. There, there, are, there aren't any. That gives me hope. He's alive and well. They used to sing a song, Jesus is alive and well. Jesus is alive and well. Tell everybody you see, tell them for me, Jesus is alive and well. <laughs> he's healed of those stripes that was on his back. And he's been raised up. And he sits at the right hand of the throne of God. Victor is waiting to come back. Next time he get up, it won't be to come to pay the price of sin. It's going to be the rapture, you and I. And the good part is, not is he, he's not just sitting there alone. When you were dead in your trespasses and sins, According to Ephesians 2, 6. He raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. And I have hope this morning. There's hope for your children. There's hope for them going back to school. 
There's hope for you paying your bills. There's hope for healing. There's hope. There's always expectation. Why? Everyone said, Christ in me. The anointed God in me. My hope of glory. Now, I want you to look with me at first Thessalonians. So, who, who is our hope? Christ. Jesus. That's what gives us hope. Right? Amen. Expectation. I'm expecting good things to happen. I'm expecting this to not only be a year of recovery, but a year of restoration. I said a year of restoration. Hallelujah. You're coming out of the red and you're going beyond the black you're going to where you're going to become the lender and not the bar not only are you going to be out of debt you're going to be able to help somebody else your cup is about to run over we're not talking about just surviving we're talking about thriving going higher from glory to glory from faith to faith why? Christ is in me and I can do I can do this thing. I can come out of debt. I can pay my house off. I can be healed. Why well, I'm not by myself through Christ who infuses me. It's like taking a blood transfusion when all of your strength is gone. Come on, isn't that what happened with the woman with the issue of blood? You women know blood loss that time. It's weakness, your iron is low. And you feel dragged in time. She had lost all of, her, all of her blood. But when she heard of Jesus, he infused her. Because she reached out and said, I can do this thing. And when she grabbed the hem of his garment, anointing, Dunamis power went out of Jesus and stopped putting blood back in her body. Because she said, I can do. There's no such thing as a hopeless situation. That's why we celebrate resurrection morning. Now, Look at 1 Thessalonians, something we often minister sometimes at home goings, but it's, it's not, it wasn't really talking about home goings. I mean, it include that. But I want you to find out that this is about life. And it encourages those of our loved ones who have gone home. It gives us a different perspective. Now, we just said Christ in us, our hope of glory. Now, if you go back and you read here in 1 Thessalonians, chapter, what I say, 4? Uh, did I give a verse? Look at verse 13. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep, that you sorrow not. What's this? even as others which have no hope. Stop. Don't sorrow, even as others which have no hope. Christ in me, my hope of glory. Who is he talking about? Christ. He said, the next verse, for we believe, watch this, that Jesus died and rose again. Now we just read that. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart, God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Even so they will sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. He's saying there's two classifications of people. Don't put this up. Those with hope who got Christ. Christ hit me, man. And those without hope. When you don't have Christ, and I'll show you the scripture says to be without Christ is to be without hope and without God in the world. Thank God for Jesus. He's our hope of the resurrection. Put this up in the in, in Amplified, these first two verses, so we can make it plain. I want to help some of you. And don't get me wrong. We all have people that have stepped over into glory. 
Everybody in here got a loved one, a family member. And what, what Paul was trying to do was let us know, listen, man. I don't want you to be ignorant. I'm not being insensitive, brother, about those that's falling asleep in death that you may not grieve. Now, the key word is grieve. It's okay to cry. Crying is natural. Jesus, well, but he turned right around and raised Lazarus from the dead. Grief is of the devil. Grief uh, surely is born out of grief. Grief is designed to make you sick and to break your heart and break down your body. He said that I'm, I'm telling you this so you let the spirit of grief get on you. He says here, for them that as the rest do, who have no hope. He's talking about people without Jesus. If someone born again, he ain't even calling it death. It's like a sleep. If I was to tell you that my mother, Clara Diaz, moved to France, and she's living there now, and until Jesus come, I couldn't see her again, but she's got a great life. She's out of debt. She's well. She's got a bill. Ain't nothing sad about that. And Paul is trying to say, don't have emotions, but don't let your emotions overtake you. They got it as good as they get. It's other people that don't know have Christ is the one who don't have no hope beyond the grave. Keep going. So, so, so I'm going to make it plain. So since we believe that Jesus died, see, that's the cornerstone in our faith. The fact that he's been raised from the dead and rose again, even as God will also bring with him those that have fallen asleep in Jesus. Wait a minute. How can God bring those with him if they're out there in the graveyard? No, 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 no. Their bodies, their spirit to be absent from the body. Good God Almighty, ain't nothing sad about me. It's to be present with the Lord. Whew, joy unspeakable. And what God is saying, I'm going to do an overhaul. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring their spirit back with them, which is already brand new. And in the moment, in the twinkle of the eye, their bodies are going to be raised incorruptible. You could have taken them and had the body cremated. And taking those ashes and sprinkling them to every ocean in the world. But at the return of Jesus, every particle is coming back together, glorified, and is going to wrap itself around that spirit. <laughs> see, that's hope. Resurrection hope. See, 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 sometimes what the enemy will do. He'll try to not only take away your hope, he'll try to use someone that preceded you in death, that was born again, to try to depress you. But I want to change that narrative this morning. It's time for you to get your joy. It's time for you to start shouting. Because there's resurrection hope for all of us. He said there are two, classif two classifications of people. Those with Christ and those without Christ. You go back to the King James. He said, for I say this by the word of the Lord. That day which alive and remain. Say, that's me. Say, I plan on being here. At the, at, at, at remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them that have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangels and the trump of God shall sound and the dead in Christ going to rise first. And we which are alive, simultaneously, as their bodies are recreated brand new, ours is going to be simultaneously, feet high when we are here, simultaneously changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And we're going to meet, be caught up, there's going to be a catching away, hallelujah, in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, 
Comfort one another. Comfort one another. They got a better health than you and I. You still dealing with these demons. <laughs> Comfort one another. What's happening? Resurrection hope. Put this up and amplify it. I just want to go back and let's pick up. Now, we would not have you. He said, for we declare unto you by the Lord's own words <laughs> who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed. We ain't got nothing on them. Into his presence or have an advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. Huh? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, the cry of, of summon, and the shout of the archangels, and with the blast of the trumpet of God, and those of us who have departed, those of us who have departed this life in Christ will rise first. Then we, see, simultaneously, time they get up, bodies change. Whew. Simultaneously, in a moment, in a twinkling of eye, this corruption going to put on incorruption. See, we all going to have to be changed. All of us going to have to go through some form of death, whether we're alive or remain, because you're going to have to shed that old body, which is like dying. And the Bible says, we which are alive on earth shall simultaneously be called up along with the resurrected dead in a cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And, and so always throughout eternity of eternity shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, in confident, encourage one another. What am I trying? Resurrection hope. Now, did you catch this? He said, don't sorrow eat them as others that have no hope. So now let me put up my statement. Two classifications of people. Did you catch it? He said, don't sorrow even as I don't have. You know what's sad? When someone don't have Christ. When someone don't have Jesus. When they didn't know the Lord. Are you listening to me? That's what's sad. That's why we can shout and praise God when you know that you know that you know that all you're looking at is a human body and not a human being. Their spirit is just as much in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And someone said that, you know, that ain't mama, that ain't, that's their body. And he says here, two classifications of people. Those with Christ, hope. Even as others that have no hope. And those without Christ, no hope. Christ in me, my hope of glory. So we got hope in this life and hope beyond death. That's why death don't have no sting. And it ain't called, it's called sleep. I'm not afraid of death. You don't have to be afraid of death if you have Christ. Because you can't kill me twice. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives within me. The life I now live in the flesh. I'm quoting you Galatians 2.20. I live by faith in the Son of God who gave this life for me. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2, verse 12. Ephesians 2, verse 12. At that time, what time? Come on. When you were what? Without Christ. You remember that? Don't, now don't, don't, go, don't, don't go and stay there. Because some of you go back and you start remembering too much. Yeah, man. Now, nah, nah, come on back. Now, don't, I'm just trying to, you know, you have flashback, but you, Paul said, forgetting those things. About. Yeah, man, we used to get high. You used to get drunk. Yeah, that was, that was when you were without Christ. Okay? At that time that you were without Christ, who is what? Your hope of glory. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants, Old and New Testament, of promise, having no hope. Why? Why didn't you have no hope? Because you were without Christ. So I'm trying to show you the world is putting their hope in money, their 401k, their job, their smarts, their education. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But the truth is, our hope is in Christ. 
Christ in me, my hope of God. That's why I can expect to succeed and rise above all adversity. And that was at that time. Someone say, that was then, but this is now. <laughs> say, having no hope and without God in the world. You see now where hope comes from? It comes from knowing the promises of God and being in Christ. And you are not without hope. You know by stripes you're healed. You know your needs are met. You know Christ is in you, your hope of glory. And I don't care how, how much your heart has been broken. I don't know what type of adversity you've been through. God can heal you. I said God can heal you. I know sometimes we can be scarred, hurt, feel devastated. But there is a bomb in Gilead. I said there's a bomb in Gilead. He's Christ the healer. He's Christ the divine. I know for when my heart was broken and I was in the world on drugs and alcohol and, and dope and pills and going straight to hell, not only did Christ heal me, he pulled me up out of the mire clay, changed my life, and gave me hope. And I've been preaching to people for 46, 47 years. No such thing as a hopeless situation. That's why we celebrate Resurrection Day. He was raised up above all adversity. And I do have hope. Earnest expectation. In this life and in the life to come. Look at Proverbs 13, 12. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be short this morning. I chose to encourage you. Proverbs 13. So who, who is our hope? Christ. Christ in me. My expectation for good. Hallelujah. There's a promise. All the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen. That gives me hope. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's why you should never let go of your hope. Hope is your desire. It's your goal setter. It's your blueprint of what you desire. Hallelujah. I hope to move in that house. I hope to be out of debt. What are you basing that on? So something God said. His promises. The promises of God are able to actually draw pictures in your spirit and frame your world. Through faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. The words, words are, are actually frame pictures. You can, you can see words in the spirit as I speak them, even though you know, they hit your ear in the spirit, they paint images. Dog. You can see that. Black dog, look at the image change. Black curly dog, look at the image, I'm going to change it again. Black three-legged curly dog, what's happening? The more I talk, the more your spirit gets. When God says, your needs are met, by my stripes you'll heal. It, it paints pictures in your spirit. And the more you get in the word of God, the more it begins to frame your world. All of a sudden, you begin to not just, oh, Shande Boko, not just believe what you see. You begin to see what you believe. Some of you didn't hear that. A man that walked by faith, he just don't, well, I don't see no money. I don't see, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't believe what you see. You begin to see what you believe because you're looking by faith into the spirit. And I believe I'm healed. And I can see it in the word. I see the symptom there, but the word says by strikes I'm healed. I see ain't no money in the bank, but the word says I'm a tither and my knees are met. And I see what I believe. That's my hope. And once you lose that, notice what happened. Put it up. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Well, what, what He's talking about Jesus. To be without Christ is to have no hope. And there are people trying to be successful in life without Christ. If I can just get a great job, if I can just get the position, if I can just get on down at so-and-so, if I can just get with this law firm, you can do all that without Christ. It's delusional hope. It might go good for a while, but something is going to come up in your life that you're going to need Christ. He's our resurrection hope. I know everybody.
everybody desires to be successful, to have a career, to have a good relationship, to come out of debt, to have a good life on earth. There ain't not one person, even the homeless desire that, but they lost all hope because they don't know Christ. There are people up under the bridge sleeping that's talented, but no one has preached to them hope. Matter of fact, they say they're hopeless. And so you get more and more depressed. And there are Christians in church who, who don't know the promises of God, who don't understand what I'm preaching because religion has taken away their hope. Religion says one of these days it'll change. When you get over yonder in the sweet by and by, I won't have to cry no. One of these, see, religion will put off your, your victory until one of these days. But you need to be healed now. You need to have hope now. You don't defer your hope. To defer means to postpone or put off. You need a picture in your, your victory. You need a picture. That's what those doctors have done to that woman with the issue of blood. They kept saying, one of these days, one of these days, one year, two year, three year, five, 12 years. She'd almost lost hope till she heard of Jesus. Good God Almighty. And she said, I know y'all guys can't, can't do nothing. But if I can touch the hem of his garment, I'm transferring my hope from doctors to Christ. Christ in me, my hope of glory. I shall be made whole. And the, 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 the original Hebrew or Greek says she kept saying that. Then she got in the press. That's why sometimes you got to press your way to church. You can't go by how you feel. You can't go by what happened with the kid. You can't go by what happened in your marriage. The devil say, why are you going to church for? Because I'm pressing my way. My pastor got a word from Almighty God. And then she got in the press. People all around them, throwing them, pushing them. <coughs> but she grabbed them in faith. Jesus stopped. She said, somebody touch me. They said, what you mean all these people touch No, no, no. Somebody touch me. For I perceive that dunamis, resurrection power, anointing has gone out of me. And he turned and said, woman, your faith has not just healed you. Your blood just haven't dried up. But your faith has made you whole. Nothing missing, nothing broken. All that money you lost the last 12 years is coming back. All the peace you lost the last 12 years is coming back. All your relationships, your children and grandchildren, they're coming back. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Why? Because the hope was in Christ. Resurrection power. And you ain't got to wait. He's right here, Christ in me. Whew. And I can do. I got to work with him. I can't lay down under this thing. I got to rise above feelings. I got to rise above negative emotions. I got to press my way. I might even have to preach to myself a little bit, praise God. But I refuse to lay down. Why? Hope deferred. Put it back up again. Makes the heart sick. Depression set in. Self-pity set in. Fear set in. Look at you. Look at your situation. Your bills. No money. Blah, 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 blah. I'm talking to you in the balcony too. I don't care what you're going through. I see you up there. The Spirit of God is calling you out. Don't never let nobody knock your hope and expectation out of you. Just because they can't believe it don't mean you can't believe it. Sometimes you have to have faith that stands alone. You can't wait on mama. You can't wait on daddy. Brother, sister, sometimes even husband or wife. 
God showed it to you. You got the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain. Don't it tarry. See, everybody don't see what you see. Don't it tarry. Wait on it. For the vision is yet for appointed time. And in the end, it's going to speak for itself and not lie. Hallelujah. Those same folks that said it can't happen, never could happen, never would happen. Praise God. In the end, you're going to be vindicated. Everything God promised you will come to pass. Your children will come into the kingdom. You'll come out of debt. You'll be holding the title to your car. You'll have that business that no one said can be started. Because God showed you hope, resurrection hope. You, everybody don't see what you see. Everybody didn't see what I saw years ago. They thought I was crazy. A little Baptist boy running around the church. Because God had given me a vision for the world. You have to be careful who you share your dreams with. Because everybody's not capable of operating outside of jealousy. You find out where your real friends are when you begin to prosper. When you move out of the ghetto. When you move out of just a four-room house. To nine, you find out who's really with you. God never told Joseph to share his dream with his brothers. Sometimes we open our mouth to the wrong people. I want to declare and decree there's always hope. And I prophesy that God is doing a new thing in your life right now on your job, in your finances, with your children. All he wants you to do is keep hope alive. Keep, praise God, expectation alive. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Sometimes you have to get away from negative people. When they're trying to dash your hope and put you down. So, put up my statement as I get ready to close. <laughs> then life without Christ. See, Christ in you, your hope of glory. Leads to delu delusional hope. There are a lot of people trying to be successful without Christ. That's why I'm going to give you an invitation in just a few minutes. I don't need Christ in school. Yes, you do, young people. I tried. I almost died. Most of us went to hell. Got saved at 18 years old. Been saved ever since. Right out of fresh out of high school. But I had to learn to school the hard knocks. I'm trying to save you some time. There are people trying to be successful in business and this and jobs and their career. And I thank God for education. My God, get all you can get. But without Christ, it's still delusional hope. You're going to run into something that your degree can't, your degree can't get you healed. There's certain problems your degree ain't going to be able to, to help you with. It's going to take Christ. He is our resurrection hope. Otherwise, we'll have a sick heart. That's why a lot of people are sick. Trying to live life without Christ. When he's already said, I'm divine, you're the branch. Without me, you can't do nothing. Huh? I need him. I need, when you recognize, you got to humble yourself and say, God, I've been trying to do this by my, I need you in my marriage. I need you on my job. I need you in my life. I need you. You're the vine. I'm the branch. I draw my sap, my anointing, my wisdom for you. I can't preach without you. I can't build a church without you. I can't help people without you. First Corinthians 15, 19, and 20. If only in this life we have hope in Christ, then we are all, hold that right there, but most miserable of men. In other words, that don't mean you don't have hope. It means we with Christ do have hope, but do it end in this life? No, keep reading. But now is Christ risen from the dead. See, that's the cornerstone. 
<laughs> Come on, our resurrection hope. And become the first fruit, the firstborn of them that slept. In other words, he got resurrected, you and I are going to get resurrected. <laughs> we got hope not only in this life, but life beyond this life. In other words, you can live, have the best of both worlds with Christ right now. <laughs> I'm living a beautiful life. And it don't end whether when he returns or by the resurrection. It only continues. There are people that are miserable in this life because they're trying to live it without Christ, without hope. And hope deferred will make your heart sick. He is my hope. He's hoping a pandemic. He's hope for your children. He's hope for your job situation. He's hope for your marriage. He's hope. What is hope? Earnest into an expectation. That goes beyond just natural hope. It's the hope of God. It's the same type of hope that Abraham had when he was 100 years old. And his body was 100 and dead. And Samer wound was dead and dried up and 90. And the Bible says against hope he believed in hope. He took the hope that came from the promises of God and said it don't matter what signs say. I am the father of many nations. And Isaac came. See there's hope that comes from the word and then there's no hope that comes from the world and some of you been looking to the world for your hope your job and this and your boss man maybe if I do this and get a raise and if I get that degree if I, and I'll do all of those things but it's going to only be delusional hope you're going to run into something that's going to take God let, let, let me close with this because I want to give an invitation here let me close <laughs> look at 1 John 3 Verse 1 through 3. I want to say happy resurrection to all y'all guys. And if I was you, if you can go to Walmart, Old Charlie's, Red Lobster, Pennies, no, Pennies going out of business. What happened? They sell some Pennies, I don't know. Walgreens, the mall, with your mask on, you can come to church. Don't stop. That's all I'm saying. Don't, don't, don't go with I did my Easter duty. You're going to need Christ next week. Stream live. Even if you don't come and stream live, just go to www.worldlife.tv. You need to. It's, nothing is going to change until you bring Christ in on the street. And I, I don't say that. To, that wasn't a, like trying to throw something in your face. It's just the truth. Because you're at Walmart. People ain't so to everybody. In the line, all this. And then you worried, you ain't worried about nothing now. And then, you, oh, if I go to church. Look, the, the best thing that can happen to you, you get near me, you're going to get healed. Because there's healing in here. Why? Because where two or three are gathered together in my name, the great I am, the difference between Walmart and here, Jesus is walking you out, healing you, drying up, praise God, COVID-19. That's the difference of this atmosphere. Let me close, let me close. Someone shout, Christ in me. My hope of glory. Woo, resurrection hope. Not just one day of the year, every day of the year. <laughs> Why? Because he lives. Behold, look at your Bible. First John 3. Turn there. I know some of you it got it. I like you to have it in your Bible too. It's not just screen call. Some of you go home so you can go back home. First John 3. Look at verse 1. As we get ready to close. Little John 3. Verse 1 says this. Behold, what man of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons and daughters of God. Wherefore the world don't know us. They don't know us not because they knew him not. There are people on your job, they think they know you, they don't even know the real you. That your dad is almighty God. Got a new, new papa and papa got a brand new bag. Behold, 
Beloved, now are we sons. When? Right now. As you sit here. And daughters of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear. Who? Jesus. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man and woman that has this hope in him. What hope? Christ in me, my hope of glory. Purifies himself even as he is pure. That's why when you have a desire and a vision of being like Jesus, it keeps your life consecrated. It keeps you judging yourself. Look, when you plan on being like Jesus, you ain't going to run with a bunch of job turkeys. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna if you're gonna mount up with eagle eagle wings, you can't run with drive tur job turkey. Iron shopping and iron. And all I know that the more I wanted to be like Jesus and know Him, the more I had to realize I couldn't just run with everybody else. Put this up and amplified as I close. See what I. What of incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted children of God. So we are the reason that the world does not know, recognize, acknowledge us is because it does not know, recognize, acknowledge him. Beloved, now, even here and now as God's children, it is not uh, yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be hereafter, but we know that when he shall come and is manifested, we, shall, we as children of God resemble and shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, as he really is. And everyone that has this hope, Christ in me to hope, resting in him, purifies himself, justifies, uh, just as he is pure and chaste and undefiled. That's why when people lose your vision, the first thing that's said in is impurity. As long as you want to serve God, and when you get the word, you lose hope. It's like all of a sudden stuff you said you wouldn't look at, you start looking at places you said you wouldn't go, things. And it ain't the works, it's just that the, nothing, where there's no vision, people cast off restraint. Put up my last statement. So you, you, this hope, if you got this hope, this hope of what? Being like Christ, the hope of the resurrection will help you maintain a focused, consecrated life. I'm going to be like God. I don't care who don't want to go. You know, sometimes we get caught up with our friends and young people in this cool and hip-hop hooray and hip-hop hooray and hip-hop hooray and some of them hooray going to hell, you know. You guys, sometimes you have to hip-hop now. I don't hip-hop all I know. You know, I can understand when you were, you know, 18, 19, some of you 45 going around here talking about hip-hop. You should be trying to get your, your, your disability and you go around here trying to get wear an earring and get a and get a tattoo. You're trying to spot something you lost. It's too late. Just get your social security and serve Jesus. What I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say God stay focused. Everybody don't want something in life. And long as you got this hope of being like Christ, it keep you constant. Ain't got time for that. Let's go get high. Ain't got time to get high. Let's go to the party. Party. Hey, how old are you? 52. You need to be. At some point, you grow up and say life is about accomplishment. Life is about finding a partner, not just a sex partner, but someone that wants something in life. Someone that's going to be with me. Someone I can pray with, agree with. Someone that we can own a home together so that we can get some real estate together. That ain't life on those videos. That ain't real. Those guys don't own those Lamborghinis. All that, when they make it rain with all that money, that ain't their money. And this is what has deceived this generation. When you get a hope of being like Christ, this man ain't got time for mess. It keeps you consecrated. Every man that has this hope resting in him will purify himself. Let me close with this statement, and I'm through. God bless y'all. I love you so much. You're welcome here anytime. Philippians 3, 9 and 10. Paul said, my determined purpose is that I might know him. I want to know him. And that I might progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders 
of his person more strongly, more clearly, that I may in the same way come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers, and that I may share his suffering as to be continually transformed in spirit and his, in his likeness, even in his death, in this hope. See, watch this, in this hope. What hope? Being like Christ, knowing him. Look at this last verse. Did I tell y'all to do it? That if possible, I might attain the spiritual and moral resurrection that lift me out of from among the dead. Watch this. Here's the kicker. Even while I'm in this body. Resurrection power in your body. Holly, not when you die and it's pick you up. I'm talking about resurrection power keeping you alive. Resurrection power flowing to every cell of your being. Resurrection power flowing into your heart, flowing into your cells, keeping you whole, making you heal. The word becoming medicine to your flesh. He said, I want the resurrection power, not just when I die and go back to heaven. I want it Why, even while I'm in this body. Flood my mind when I'm in school. The mind of Christ, the wisdom of God. Hallelujah, the power of God afflicting affecting my brain cell the power of God affecting my heart and liver the power of God affecting my pancreas the power of God in this body driving out COVID-19 driving out sickness and disease resurrection power that gives me hope I ain't got to wait till I die and go to heaven I can have this power in my body now Christ in me right now I want to get to know him that much till I think like him, talk like him, walk like him, be conformed. <clears throat> now, every head by every eye closed. There's one person in here, you don't know Jesus Christ alone in your life. I ain't talking about I'm a good person. I ain't talking about I sing. I, use, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about what I shared with you, Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you haven't done that, and you say, Pastor, I want to be saved. That's the starting point. I can save some of you a lot of time. I've been on both sides, and it's good on this side. Oh, there's hope. There's hope. To be without Christ is to have no hope. You think you got false hope. If you don't know him as Lord of your life, put your hand up right now. There's one person you say, just pray for me. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to come down here. We're just going to pray one prayer. Just slide that hand up. Now is the the time of salvation. I wouldn't worry about nobody I came with. They ain't got no heaven or hell. I know where to send you to. This is about personal. Is that one person? Now I need to know the difference between people praising God and people hands up. I see a hand waving. Is that a hand? saying that I'm praising God is that a hand saying I want to pray this prayer okay but listen to me guys thank you for coming 